Welcome everybody, this is John Burra from MammothInteractive.com and I'm going to show you how to mix your music for video games. So, uh, you've probably heard a lot of video game music and it's actually mixed quite a bit differently than if you were to hear it, uh, let's say uh, for a production, for example on iTunes or you hear it on YouTube or the radio or something like that, uh, when you actually produce uh, music for uh, video games, you mix it a little bit differently. So, first things first, I'm just going to use this intro theme song here. So, let's just take a quick listen to this. And this is normally used for video here. So, if you wanted to make uh, music for, let's say, like movies or something like that, this is currently mixed for that. But what I'm going to show you how to do is make some adjustments so that it's better uh, in a video game environment. So, let's go ahead and let's take a listen to this uh, small clip here. So here you can see that here. Now the first things first uh, that we need to take a look at is these, uh, this parametric uh, equalizer here. And how to do that is you pull up the mixer here and we're just gonna go in the master and you can see that I have it already here. I also have uh, Maximus here. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll start off with this uh, parametric uh, EQ and how you select that here is you go into here and um, you can see that uh, you can go into parametric EQ. It's right at the bottom here. Okay, so now that we have that, you can see that I have it mixed in a certain way. Now, usually when you come up with that, it just comes up right here. And as you can see, we can look at this. Now, what this does is that this takes a look and it gives you a visual representation of the audio spectrum. So if you have a whole bunch of low notes, it will light up here where the low spectrum is. And if you have a whole bunch of high notes, it will light up here. So um, depending on where the note is and what kind Kind of overtones they have, uh, they it will light up accordingly. So let's just take a listen to that and let's just take a quick look at what this uh, music kind of looks like in terms of the audio spectrum. <music> see that most of them are around here. Now, one thing that you uh, you can do is around the sixth uh, one or the five or six, if you move it up like this, this is one of the easiest ways to make your music sound good for videos or anything cinematic, or even if you're making your own music to release on iTunes. So let's just take a listen to this. <laughs> You can hear that's a little bit more, uh, it, it's a little bit more uh, clear as you can see. Now, if we take that down a little bit and just, and remember with equalizers, you don't want to make big movements like this. You just want to make small movements like that. So something like this, let's just take a quick listen to that. <laughs> It does make it sound a little bit more dull. Now, let's talk about the main thing that video game music differs from uh, from regular music uh, that you would normally produce. The main difference is that video game music, uh, at least in the last you know five or ten years, has been. Uh, is much more background, okay? So if you uh, remember music for, let's say, the Nintendo Entertainment System in the 80s, the music was much more foreground, meaning that the not only the volume was there, but the, the types of instruments were changed. And on top of that, um, uh, the, the instruments were mixed a, a different way. So today, if you want to make a, a, or mix a lot of good video game music, what you have to do is you have to make it a little bit more dull. Now, when you're in the editor, this is probably the worst decision that uh, you, you think you're doing, but in reality, when your music goes into the game, it's a completely different atmosphere. So when you're listening to something in the editor and you listen to something in game, it's quite a bit different. Usually in games, uh, the volume is actually uh, reduced by about half. So just to, to show you what that means is if I take this uh, right down here and move it to maybe a little bit more than half like this, uh, you, you'll see the difference here. I'm just going to go ahead and play that. And if you were to actually move it up all the way here, The, the music would be too in the gamer's face, okay? So that's one thing that, that you'll have to do. And usually the volume isn't uh, adjusted within the editor, it's adjusted within the game. And the reason for that is that, you know, programmers, when they're making their games, they want to uh, they want to make sure they have full control over that. So when you do export this to a video game, uh, what you do want to make sure that you do 
is you want to export it at full volume, okay? The second thing here is that um, all of this, for example, specifically these echoes here, and if we hop into uh, this ARP here, uh, you can see that uh, if, we, if we just listen to this, and we just play. If you listen to that, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of high uh, a lot of higher notes in there, okay? And it sounds uh, I mean a little bit brittle if you want to get used to that. So if you want to go and change that here, you want to select the echoes here, and you can go to any one of these and just push uh, Command L, okay? And that will bring up the uh, the echoes uh, within the mixer here, which is kind of cool. And uh, let's just go ahead and let's put in that parametric EQ. Okay, so now we have a, a parametric EQ, not only for the master, okay, but we have one for the echo as well. And you can see that there are two of them now. Which sounds kind of cool when you think about it, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to just pull off the top here, okay? And um, let's just take a quick listen to this. Now, you can hear the difference between those two, so I'm just going to put this back up to where it was in the normal. It sounds a lot more dull, right? Which sounds kind of cool, and uh, it looks like there's a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of something going on here. Uh, I'll just move this window here, like that, and then I'll move this window here. I'm uh, recording this on this size of screen just because, um, uh, just because it's a little bit easier for everyone to see. So in any event, if we take a listen to this. So when you make it dull like that, when you're in the editor, you're thinking that's just the worst I idea that you could possibly do, right? Uh, it does sounds horrible. It doesn't sound uh, very. Uh, it doesn't sound very good. But believe it or not, when you export this to the game, it actually makes a whole bunch more sense, right? Now you're probably wondering why I decided to just change up the echoes and not the entire uh, the entire project here. Now we can do that. We can actually uh, pull that down right there. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at the song here. So if we and you can see that sounds quite a bit better. Now if we if we close down. And as you can see, that sounds quite a bit better. But as you can see, if you uh, if you pull this down as well for the masters, you'll see that it sounds a lot more mellow, and that's exactly what we're trying to get at. So the more mellow it is, the better. Now let's just take a quick look at the uh, the drum here. Okay, so. Now, I intentionally made this uh, so that it, it's not that big. If we changed up the bass drum to something a little bit uh, more intense, you can hear that um, it, it, if I were to put this back up, you hear, how, you hear how there's a lot more detail in there? Well, if you go down and put this down a little bit, you can go and hear that. Yeah, it sounds quite a bit better. So let's just take a listen to the whole thing now. Yeah, so as you can see, that does sound a little bit, a uh, little bit better here. Another thing you can do is you can actually take down. Uh, what ends up happening is that if you if you take down some of the higher tones, uh, for example, this bell, and just by moving the volume down a little bit, it'll sound a little bit better. Okay. So what have we learned here today? Well, we've learned that um, when you mix your uh, music for video games, you want to make it sound a lot more mellow than you would normally do for, let's say, a film or something like that. And the reason is is that you don't want your music to be that intense in the game. Now, sometimes I personally like to have intense music, and uh, when you do this, you're echoing back to the era of the of the 8-bit and sometimes even the 16-bit machines where the music was not only A, a lot, a lot louder, but B, they, they didn't tend to uh, make the instruments sound mellow. So remember when we, we took the echoes and we took the parametric EQ and we made everything sound more mellow. Uh, that's, what, that's what they're doing. Now, if you want to make things sound more intense, around this uh, six, uh, 6 mark here, if you just put it up a little bit, let's just take a listen to that. We'll just take a listen to the the ARP here. 
You can see that sounds a lot more intense. So again, the one thing that I find really hard about anything about mixing uh, music for video games is that when you're in the editor, you want to make things sound as detailed as possible, but you really want to make things sound a little bit more mellow just because when you export it to the game, uh, it's going to be too much in the gamer's face. All right. So you can check out more tutorials at mammothinteractive.com. Be sure to sign up to the mailing list, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.